Hi, my name is Corey Gully, and I'm a CFD technical subject matter expert here at Autodesk. In this video, what we'll do is we'll discuss the ways in which we can model natural convection. There are three methods in which we can model natural convection for, for heat transfer analysis. Uh, the first is, is insulated. Uh, with an insulated uh, natural convection model, uh, essentially what we're going to do is we're going to assign no boundary conditions and we also won't model in the surrounding fluid. Um, this is going to ensure that no heat uh, can enter or leave the control volume from the ambient environment. So essentially all the heat is being maintained within the existing domain. Um, for example, what we'll do is we'll take a look at the image down in the bottom right. Uh, this is a water faucet that's obviously going to be carrying water through it. And how does heat transfer interact uh, from the ambient environment uh, to this water faucet? Um, if we apply no boundary conditions and no surrounding fluid, then all the heat is going to be maintained within that water source uh, in the model. The second is by assigning a, uh, an additional boundary condition, which is going to be a film coefficient. Um, so a film coefficient is basically describing how heat is going to interact with the ambient environment, and it's typically based off the of surface temperature. So what we can do to speed this up is to mo make an assumption of what that film coefficient is, and that's going to uh, describe the rate at which heat can enter or leave that control volume. Um, typically, what people will do is they'll look up a, a, a Google table or a thermodynamic value, and then they'll supply their own natural uh, convection or their own film coefficient for that method. The third is the most computationally taxing, um, but it yields the most accurate results. And what we'll do in this method is we'll actually go in and model the outside surrounding air. So we're going to give it an additional fluid domain outside of the surrounding model. Now, when we use this method, um, obviously it's going to create more geometry, which means more mesh, which means a, a little bit longer runtime. But the beauty of this is that it automatically will calculate those film coefficients at the node for us automatically. Uh, it does this because it understands what that temperature surface value is on the outside surrounding, um, surrounding of the model. And then by effect, what it will do is it will provide a film coefficient. So we're obviously going to have the most accurate values that way. So let's take a look at how we handle this in CFD. Um, here what we'll do is we'll take a look at the first model, which is just going to be insulated. So we've got a pretty standard setup. We've applied our materials. We've applied boundary conditions um, to the model. Obviously, we've got water uh, as the fluid inside of the pipe. And for a boundary condition, we have two flow rates. Um, we have two flow rates, one on the left nozzle, one on the right. And then, we, of course, we've got our pressure outlet down in the bottom. When we go in and we start to set up our model, we'll eventually say we want to solve it, and we need to turn on heat transfer, which is just a checkbox for us. If we want to take natural convection into consideration, we can also go down and turn on the gravity components. That way we make sure we capture any sort of buoyancy effect in our model. So that's the first method. All the heat's going to be maintained within that first control volume. The second, I'll show you how we can model a film coefficient in our analysis. We don't need to model the outside existing air. We can leave the model exactly the same way it is, same materials. And the only thing I have to do now is go in and define that boundary condition. Uh, an average value for natural convection for a film coefficient is usually around 5 to 50 watts per meter square Kelvin, uh, 10 being a little bit on the low side. Uh, and then, of course, as you get up to 50 and 100, you start to get into forced convection models. But also in this dialog box, you'll notice the reference temperature. This is the temperature of the outside surrounding ambient uh, environment or that surrounding fluid. And we're just going to say it starts off at 70, which is uh, right around room temperature there. So when I assign these film coefficients, I'll select the outside surfaces. And this is exactly where heat is allowed to enter or leave that control environment, um, that control volume based off the temperature differential. It's very speedy, and it's going to give us some decent results. The third method is by modeling in the air volume. Um, so we actually need to mock up some existing geom or some new geometry here. So we'll go to our geometry tools and leverage the external volume capabilities and just model up that extra domain. 
Um, I've got some nice handles here that'll easily easily allow me to uh, model that outside air. And what it's going to do is it's going to subtract anything modeled inside of that box. So all I'm left with is air on the outside. And of course, I need to go into CFD and assign a material to say that is actually uh, going to be air. So once I've created that geometry, um, I'll go back into my setup in CFD, and then I can just select the volume. And then again, we're just gonna edit from our materials box, select that it's air. And then of course we can go in and run uh, our analysis. And this way we're actually going to be calculating those film coefficients as the model is solving. So those are the three methods in which we can model any sort of natural convection or really how we're describing any sort of heat transfer between our model and the outside ambient environment. The first is do nothing, which is insulated. The second is by making an assumption, which is a film coefficient. And the third is the most accurate, but most computationally taxing. And that's actually mocking up the existing outside domain. Thanks. Hope this helped a lot. I'll catch you in the next video.